and I found this thing called Strength-Based Leadership. And it was a book. I didn't know anything about it, never heard anything like it. And it was about five years ago. But as I'm reading through it, it's talking about how there are different types of leadership and everybody's different. And, and, and it, for me, it perfectly described what they needed. Look, when you realize this, you'll realize that you're a potential leader. It comes from Gallup, which I do a fair amount of work with now. And it was a program called Strength Finder. Anybody ever do the program? At the same time, I'm trying to figure out how to engage an audience communication-wise. And I've got my stuff that I do on, look, it's a one-way street. You can't think they're going to meet you halfway. You've got to reach out and find them. But who is the audience? How do you figure out how to get in their head? If you have people you talk to every day, how do you get them to pay attention to you? And I came across this word engagement as I'm over the last 10 years, and engagement kept popping up, and I start researching and I start studying. And it turns out that engagement's an old word that's probably, that in terms of what we do, probably all of you heard about engagement. It's a word that's being used a lot these days. Gallup started developing engagement in the early 80s. So they've got this one thing called Strength Finder where they figure out what makes somebody unique and individual as a person and everybody's unique and everybody has different strengths and they, they play to those strengths, they will be more successful. And they've got this other thing called the Q12, which is, is an engagement study. 14 million people have taken Strength Finder. 30 million people have been part of the Q12. So what I'm talking about this, this afternoon is a is that what happens when you put focusing on someone's strengths together with I want to improve the engagement in my team. The people, in the, the companies in the top 25%, 37% lower absenteeism, 65% lower turnover in low turnover organizations, 41% fewer safety accidents, I just read research that just came out that said they're looking at now 70% lower safety accidents. And these are averages. 21% higher productivity, 22% higher profitability. And you start saying, okay, so what's it, what's it going to cost me to get this? Because that's pretty nice, don't you think? I go, wow. Let me see if I, if I can figure that one out. So let's begin with defining terms, which I like to do. And an engaged employee works with passion and feels a profound connection to their organization. 30 is the United States average. That's 30, 70% are not engaged. I think that's crazy. And it turns out people stay at companies where they're engaged. And they quit companies they're not engaged. And people don't quit their companies. They quit their immediate supervisor. Because if we can get this by improving our engagement, then we ought to be getting the people who are going to affect that to affect that. So if 31% in, are engaged, what are the rest of them? Well, over half of them are not engaged. That doesn't mean they're bad employees. It means they're not passionately involved in the success of the organization. So what's the other 18%? And the 18% changes between 18 and 20%. But what is this? They're called actively disengaged. Gallup refers to them as cave dwellers, consistently against virtually everything. But the actively disengaged, not only will they work to the contract, work as little as possible, they will sabotage you if you try to make them do something they don't want to do. They'll prove that you don't know what you're talking about. So these people need to be addressed. And they said, we can figure out if an employee is engaged with 12 questions. No, and we can improve. By addressing the individual question, we can improve the engagement. Uh, right questions, I got it down to 12. And the first one, I know what is expected of me at work. I want compassion. I want you to care. Isn't that interesting? 
in the world of getting people engaged, it begins with the foundation. And what do I get? If I don't know what I get, then I'm confused. Do I provide anything to the organization? Do I feel like I fit in? Is it a good organization to be a part of? And am I growing in some way? So it begins, there are basic needs, and then there's, is the management a part of it? Is the team playing along? Are we all part of the same group? And is there an opportunity? Is there hope here? Is there, you see that? So you could look at it as the first two questions. If you don't have the first two questions, any engagement's not based on any solid foundation. Strength is when you exercise, focus on, develop your natural talent. If I focus on your strengths, I can get three quarters of you to be engaged. But if I don't focus on your strength, I get 9% engagement. This is the way Gallup breaks down strengths. They say you have 34. There are 34. There are more strengths, but the ones that were major, the way they really popped, were these. They fall into four categories, people who can get stuff done people who can influence others and convince others, people who are good at relationships of some kind, and people who are just good at thinking through stuff. Focus is like a dog with a bone. Horror can be happening around you, and I'm just, I know exactly what I have to do, and I'm going to keep doing it, and it's not going to get upset me, and I know how I'm, uh, uh, things will come out okay, because I have, I'm capable of not being distracted. Focus on a follower's strength, and you can get 73% engagement. And they say, you, if you focus on somebody's weaknesses, they will feel incompetent. And, and when there is a real problem, they will praise loud, but they will fix soft. So remember this from this morning? Compassion, trust, stability, and hope. When they did this research, they found out that the, uh, com the compassion thing was not the first title. Everything, trust, stability, hope, those were the number one things. The number one thing employees wanted from their leader, followers wanted from their leader is, if you want me to follow you, you've got to love me. Business compliments are unusual. Most companies are not in the habit of them. And I think a business compliment has four steps. It's simple, sincere, specific, and helpful. Focus on what they do well. So, and when you do, it inspires and motivates. And if you give them a compliment, it will feel really good. You want to engage them? Recognize their value. We're talking about productivity and profitability. Reduced expense. And people their supervisors. Thank you very much.